Hey, my bubby bounders, it's me, Arben Garzid. As you probably know from this week's Out This Week, our new book, Kill the Minotaur, is available now. To help us celebrate the release of this twisty, turdy adventure, I enlisted the help of our favorite piece of cheese, Brie Esther. Um, nom, nom, nom. What's this <laughs> nom, nom, nom. doing here? Just okay. get it out of here. Should I? All right. You know what? I'll lean on it. Okay. I really love your nickname, by the way. Oh. Can I have a nickname? Yeah. Is it cool? Please. Yeah. Hi, guys. It's me. Hey guys, it's me, Brandon. I love you. And you have to call me that the rest of the show. I'm not calling you, I love Please, you. Please, I need someone to say it to me. Hey everybody, it's me, boyfriend. Bobby Jean. Breakfast. Barry White. Bob Newhart. Bob Hope. Airboard. what? <laughs> Airbud. The Golden Receiver. Or is it? <laughs> Baba Duck. Hey everybody, it's me, Airport. I like that one, actually. Mm-hmm. Because I have a landing strip. Oh. <laughs> Come on. I'm just kidding, I don't. I don't have a Would you answer. nope? Okay, f it is. Uh, that's really perfect, but before we get into this, Chris Hardwick's ID10 Fest is going down. And you better bet your microscopic little butt that Skybound will be there. There's gonna be a music stage for acts like, okay, go. Animal Collective, Crystal Castles, The Wheezy Boys. The Weezer Boys. Along with the comedy tent featuring Dimitri Martin, Nikki Glaser, Garfunkel and Oates, among tons of other performers and mega rad things. Great. So there's some brass tacks that we need to get down to. Kill the Minotaur. Yes. The book was written by Chris Passetto and Christian Cantamesa with art by Lucas Kettner and Jean-Francois Bellou. And it's amazing. All the characters in the book are super attractive. I loved it. Oh, baby. It's such a great genre blend of Greek mythology based adventure and horror. I had to get some of my best buds together to talk about it. Let's get those big buds in here. Roll it. I said best buds. Welcome, welcome. Today we're talking Kill the Minotaur with this lovely panel of dudes and myself. <laughs> Three dudes. Three dudes and a lady. Please introduce yourselves. Yeah, uh, I'm Xander Genre. I'm one half of the nerd parody band, The Library Bards. And I'm from TBS's King of the Nerds. Uh, I'm just Brian. I'm Brian. I don't have any other name. Brian from Skybound. Yeah, that's oh, me. Yeah, that's that's me. And I'm Sean Makowitz, the editorial director of Skybound. For those who haven't read it yet, can we get sort of a brief synopsis as to what this book is about? It's a retelling of the classic myth of Theseus and the Minotaur, in which Theseus enters uh, the labyrinth to slay the Minotaur. Straight from the bat, it was kind of like what, something we were looking for. Most stuff we do is wholly original, new worlds, new characters. But to work on something that was established, mythology, and put quote unquote a skybound twist was really our, our objective with this one. So first reactions to the comic. What did you think about it? I loved it because Greek mythology was something that I was really interested in like high school and yeah. never really revisited it, you know? I was like, why didn't I? Because it was so interesting. You it didn't seems... get taught a lot of Greek mythology in it, high school? I, I mean, I did though. Okay. Yeah, I was a like, humanities like kind of person and I went to an art school mm -hmm. and like at one point you just kind of forget about it or unless you like di deep dive into it. Yeah. So it was cool to kind of like revisit this world and it's a story that we've heard before because it's the Minotaur in the Labyrinth, but it's from a different perspective, which I think is really cool. I, the color popped off immediately. Yeah. With the the whole th the theme and what's about to happen and where we're heading to, uh, this could very easily be a lot darker and mm. monotone and sure. have way more grayscale. And it, it's, it's interesting to me that it pops off the page so much. I actually really like the dialogue, how it was more contemporary. Because I, I don't know, I tend to get a little bit bored. Not by Greek mythology. Sure, sure, sure. Like, I like that you sound like an offender. I know, yeah, you're the I know you're I such I a guess. fan. Yeah. Uh, but I loved how it mixed today's dialogue, and I had never even heard of this myth, so. Oh, oh, there you go, so yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. I am eager to read the next one, because I truly have no idea how this tale ends. Can we very specifically talk about Theseus and where he's going and just 
kind of the person that he is in the first place. He's an accomplished warrior, mm -hmm. but he's very immature. He yeah. hasn't, you know, earned the respect of people. So yeah, I mean, that's exactly what this story about is, is what it takes to become a hero. Can he become a hero? I mean, he grabbed it? a sword with his bare hands. Right. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> no one's doubting his, his toughness. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. Sword in hand, but uh, they are doubting whether he can keep a, a cool head under pressure, especially when they're trapped in the labyrinth in the future with the Minotaur. What can we expect to see moving forward? Do they kill the Minotaur? Yeah. Well, I mean, that is the main question, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the one everything wants to know. So, no, I mean, you know, where the first issue ends and the second one begins, you know, we're kind of firmly in the labyrinth. Um, the Minotaur is lurking somewhere in there. And the, the next issue really focuses on their environment and who else is trapped in there with them. Well, thanks for sitting down with me today, Thank boys. Mm -hmm. uh, it has Three been boys. a great discussion. If you guys haven't checked out issue one, be sure to do so. Thank you so much for joining us today. Sounds like everyone really enjoyed this book. So to the peoples watching, let us know how much you dug this first issue. Yes. Also, let us know where you think the story is going. They pose a lot of interesting questions and really set the stage for an epic six issues. So let those predictions rip in the comments. To give us a little more insight into the book, resident digital man Mike Cruz sat down with the writers Chris and Christian to try and pry those secrets out of him. And he didn't do that. Yeah. Let it rip. Let it rip. Let it rip and dip. Can, can I get a more realistic sounding fart from you? Yeah. Hello Internet, welcome to our latest interview here on Skybot.com. I'm sitting down with Christian Cantamesa and Chris Pacetto, the writers of Kill the Minotaur, which is out in stores right now. You guys wrote the comic book as a team. As a team. How did you guys meet and how did you guys decide to sort of tell the story together? We both worked in video games and uh, we met working on Red Dead Redemption. After Red Dead, we did a short together. Uh, how I Survived the Zombie Apocalypse, which was a lot of fun, but it was also kind of us stepping into a, a very different role working together as writers. Kill the Minotaur was an idea that we had like years and years ago, and this was one that like we kind of like kicked it around, and I think it was even during air that we were talking about this story, and we didn't even know what it was going to be. We, we had this premise, and we kept developing it over years and years, and, and it was almost like this connection when Air came out and we were talking a lot to Skybound people like, hey, this should be a comic. You read the myth, right? And you always think as a person living today, it's a story. Until right. you discover that on the coins of the era from Crete, there is a labyrinth. And so where did reality stop and become myth? And where did the myth become real? We put the coins in the comic they are paying the coins that are actually the real coins. They really existed. So where is the, the boundary? Between that is gonna, the okay, now and, that's gonna drive me crazy because like, did someone write that story and then it became a popular story? So they were like, oh, you know, like everyone associates Crete with, with the labyrinth. So we're just gonna put the labyrinth on the coins. But that seems excessive. Like you don't, you don't just Especially put, there was no TV back in. The, right, we don't yeah. just put like, Buffy on our money because it's such a really popular TV show <laughs> yeah. in the United States. But should we? But should we? And look uh, at those coins, like, man. Look at those coins. There is, there is evidence. There's clues even on the coins. That's legitimately going to not let me sleep at night. I'm going to go home and read a bunch of weird Greek history books. Now you know how we felt about it and why we needed to tell the story. So who does the art on the comic book and how did you guys sort of get introduced and how did he come onto the project? And stuff? Lucas Kettner does the art on Kill the Minotaur. We were really excited for him to be on, uh, seeing what he had done with Witcher Doctor, and it really seemed to kind of strike a chord with him. Yeah, he's a big mythology fan as well, and that really helped because he, he got into the story and he got into the research. We did a bunch of research, but then when I hear Lucas yeah. talk to me about the research he's done, about like clothing, like, well, like, I wanted to do, uh, you know, traditional clothing for the Cretans, but the traditional clothing, and I'm like, I yeah, dude. didn't do any okay. of that research. <laughs> they, like, are you sure? They wear clothes. Are you sure that <laughs> that matches? I'm like, I didn't do any of the research that you just did on on the clothing that the Cretan and the hairstyles, and so yeah, I'm gonna just trust that. So he really got uh, so deep and and gotten so much that like most of the time it's like, yeah, great, you're <laughs> you're you're way ahead of us, and and we've been you know. Uh, from the most part, like on the same page every step of the way. 
I got involved with the project when my editor, Sean Makowitz, uh, contacted me about it and said that uh, Chris Pesetto and Christian Canamesa, who I was familiar with from their video game work, had written their first comic book story. I was blown away by just how well done it was. The story was, was really tight, really exciting, and I think within a day I, was, I, I just, you know, typed back, yes, let's do it. And I don't think I've ever told Chris and Christian this, or Sean, but Death Seas and the Minotaur was always my favorite Greek myth as a kid. And the idea of doing something different with it was really, really exciting for me. It was obvious that it had its own thing going on. It's a very action-oriented story. There's horror elements, which I've always kind of been attached to, you know, I, through Witch Doctor, through doing a couple stories for creepy comics that kind of thing. Everyone always sort of describes my style as having a sort of uh, retro 70s-ish horror feel to it. And uh, the idea of bringing that to Kill the Minotaur was just a really, you know, it seemed like a perfect fit. If you are in it for uh, mystery, it's got that. If you're in it for blood, it's got that. If you're in it for, uh, you know, good character relationships, it's got that too. It's a really cool take on just a classic Greek myth story. Man, I'm bummed out. I want my spoilers, I want my secrets. Where are they? Well, uh, I mean, they're in the book, but I mean, inherently, you, you know, secrets like, they're secrets for a reason. That's true. Editor Mike, throw up the definition of secrets for everyone. Now I get it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the time we have here today, Brie. Tell everyone where they can find you. I use your real name too. You did? Yeah, I don't want people you to You didn't say confused. I love you? No, I was saying Brandon. Uh, okay, I love you. Um, tell everyone where they can find you. At Brie Esterig on all social media. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to demolish that subscribe button. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to demolish that subscribe button, like and comment on the video, follow us on Facebook, Twitter Man, and all those beautiful social platforms. See you next week. Bye. That was so cute. What was cute? That little wave that we did at the end. Oh, we do that every time, so. And so it's nothing special then. Super cut of waves, Editor Mike. Bye bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye guys. Uh, okay. Uh, I love you. Yes. Wait, really? Mm-mm. Oh. Nope. You're Brandon. Huh.